Circling up, hope that was a fun stroll down memory lane. Yes. Now every teacher probably wasn't the best, but over, I mean, 12 years of education, we all had to have at least one good one, right? Did anyone have no one? No, no? You don't remember, you don't like, you were homeschooled? Oh, shoot. <laughs> That's tricky, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't really think about that one. Uh, the, the second question will be for you, the next one. Um, <laughs> okay, so we are, uh, we've been in the book of Mark, um, and I'm actually really excited for this conversation tomorrow. So, or tomorrow? Yeah, come back tomorrow and I'll finish, <laughs> I'll finish the sermon. Um, all right, so we are in the book of Mark, chapter one, uh, starting in verse 21, it goes like this. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet. Be quiet, <laughs> said Jesus sternly. You got it. The punctuation's there. Come out of him. The impure spirit <laughs> shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed, and they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching? And with authority? He even gives orders to the impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. All right, so <clears throat> when we were talking about how we were going to be in the book of Mark, and then Corey and I went over the preaching schedule, and so we were sort of going through the passages, and then I realized that I was gonna have this one. I was like, man. Um, <laughs> no, it's because I, ha I have some personal baggage with this passage. Um, so I went to Christian college, okay? Anyone else? Yeah. Woo, okay, so, so four of you will understand what's, what I'm about to say. I went to Christian college, and I didn't grow up particularly charismatic or like, I grew up very mainstream Christianity, like just the pop culture of the religion. And so I went to college and then I meet all these different people who have all these different experiences in Christianity. And one night I got invited to this Bible study and I was like, yes, obviously, you know, I'm not turning that down. Sounds great, okay? <laughs> so I was at very different college experiences, but I was excited to get invited to a Bible study. And, um, the Bible study, it just, it, it, it became, it was so different from anything I experienced. And so um, some of the girls were like, I think there's a demon in here. And I was like, whoa. Um, I'm like DC talk Christian. I'm not like, there's a demon in here, Christian. Um, <clears throat> and they're like, there's a demon in here. And so we, they all start praying. They all start speaking in tongues. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna chill. I'm just gonna like chill in the back. Because again, this is not anything I was familiar with. Um, and I was like, what, what, what do I do, you know? Um, but we're also in college, right? So then they're kind of like, as they're praying, and I'm just like listening, they're like, I think someone in here isn't fully on board, you know? And I'm like, whoa, oh, oh, you know? <laughs> like, is it, you know? And then like, it's like, and my eyes are kind of open, and they're kind of looking at me, and I'm like, what? What, what do I do? Um, anyways, I'm just saying, some of us partied in college and some of us had to pretend to speak in tongues to get out of a Bible study. And <laughs> I don't know which of us is doing better or worse, but I can, um, I can do that. But anyways, all they say, they were, passages like this never came up like in my church growing up. Like they were just like, we only did the stuff that was like, and then the, there wasn't enough fish and bread and then there was, and I was like, great. Um, we never talked about impure spirits, but as we've been going through this and preparing for this and reading this, I actually now love this passage, and I think it's more relevant than ever, um, and I think also, just to talk back, I love now, now that I'm a, just a year or two out of college, um, <laughs> there's, a, hey, <laughs> that wasn't that funny, no, um, I just think it is beautiful, all of the nuance and experience of the Christian tradition and all the people who, I don't, I don't mean that to like say anything about charismatics. It was just, it's now a beautiful thing that I can understand that people can let themselves experience something um, that I had previously been so unfamiliar with. Um, I don't know that a bunch of 19 year olds just alone in a room were the ones really nailing it, but as a tradition, I think it's, it's really beautiful. Um, so 
when I'm reading this passage, there's, there's a few things that, that stick out to me, right? Um, there's such a beautiful moment when they came in and they said, Jesus talked as someone with authority, not as the teachers of the law. And I think this is incredibly important for us to stand in today's, understand in today's context, because I think this is something that we all are struggling with and dealing with. And this is a conversation happening right now. This is a conversation that has been happening. This is a conversation that has happened for a long time, right? The conversation of who has authority, who gives authority, who gets to give authority, who gets to speak with authority, who has authority over us, how, who do we have authority, how does authority work, right? Um, and I think that is something that we all need to think about. And this kind of, this experience, this moment where Jesus goes in the synagogue, it's so amazing because it says he spoke as someone who had authority, not as the teachers of law. Which meaning to the teachers of the law, the powerful people at the time, the priests, the leaders, they weren't the ones with authority. Jesus came in with the one with authority based on what, right? Okay, so let me put it in um, to some different context because it's Black History Month. So... Um, Let's think about it like this. We live in a country um, that has a, every, <laughs> bad, it's just bad. But um, <clears throat> we have, we live in a country where the teachers of the law, the authority, the powerful people, right, since the colonization of this place, have been white people who have said things about people of color. The teachers of the law have said, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't have these rights, you have to do these things. And then you have had people who, with authority, say the opposite. Here's what I mean by this. Just a quick question. Who, who gave Harriet Tubman authority? Did Harriet Tubman go up to the White House and they said, you know what, actually, we will grant you, as the teachers of the law, we're going to allow you to just go ahead and free as many enslaved people as you can. That never happened. No one gave that lady authority. She took it. She understood that she already had it because she understood a way of life in which everyone deserved to be free, in which everyone had dignity, and that was the only authority she needed. Right? Do we understand this? Who, who gave Claudette Colvin and Rosa Parks authority? Did someone come and say, hey, as a teacher of the law, as the powerful people of the system of this time, I'm going to allow you to go ahead and just sit wherever you want to on this bus. No, they, no one gave them the authority. They understood that they already had it. They had it because what they believed in was stronger than what the teachers of the law were saying. Right? So authority isn't something Jesus walked in here and didn't say... Hey, synagogue, they just, I just got back from my PhD from Harvard, and now I'm finally, I finally deserve to be in this space and tell you something. No, no one gave him that authority. He spoke knowing he already had it. I have to take, I literally just got so out of breath. <laughs> it's like, I hope something happens. I get a pause. Um, and so every single person I look up to Every single person I think about, every person I aspire to be in the history of our great nation wasn't someone who was given authority. It was someone who lived knowing they already had it. It was someone who lived knowing that this way of Jesus, that the belief that every single person, every human has dignity, every single person deserves to be free, every single person deserves to live a life that is good and pure and believe that they are good, that is the only authority that these people needed. That is the authority that they were working on. And why this is incredibly still relevant to us today is because sometimes I feel like, I don't know why, but we give all these other people authorities. What does Fox News have to do with me? Lindsey Graham, uh, uh, what? You, you don't have any authority over me. We act as if someone has a blue check on social media and now you, you're the authority on me? No, based on what? Every single, t every single period of history, every group of people have had teachers of the law. There has been systems and there have been empires. And every single time period in history has had people who says, you are actually not the authority. I don't need your approval to treat people the way I believe they should be treated. I don't need your approval to find freedom and healing. I don't need your approval to live the life that I know I was meant to live. I don't need your approval. This is the entire, by the way, ministry of Jesus. Oh, we caught this woman in adultery? The teachers of the law say this. I don't need your approval to say, you're not going to stone this woman. Oh, this person's at the well doing something else? You guys know the stories, right? They're all there. Good, because I was like, what's the next one? Um, <laughs> What's another one? What's another one Jesus did? He did a lot of them, you guys. It's all there. You can go read it. <laughs> but that was his entire message. 
His entire thing was, no, I have authority, not because I want to be powerful, not because I'm coming from the empire, not because I went and got a PhD from Harvard, not because, you know, the American people went crazy and made a reality star president. No, that is not what gives you authority. What gives you authority is the belief in human dignity. What gives you authority, and this is the beautiful part of the story. Jesus walked in the synagogue and started teaching, started saying these things, and people knew he had authority. Why? Because it sounded right. When we look back at history, who sounds more right? We should enslave these people, or I'm going to help get them to freedom. Okay, which one of those, looking back, feels more right, right? We hear these teachings today, and we say, like, oh, of course, she was amazing. She was an icon. Well, she did that on her, she, no one gave that to her. And so in this um, <clears throat> passage, and then the guy stands up with the impure spirit and is like, I know who you are, and you come to destroy us, right? And Jesus is like, be quiet, um, which is my favorite <laughs> version of Jesus. Shut up. <laughs> Get out of my house. Um, so here's the thing. These people don't have authority, but there is a difference between authority and power. So as much as these people, the President of the United States doesn't have authority over me, Ron DeSantis doesn't have authority over me, these people do still have real power. And that power does enact things in the law that do impact our lives, right? And by the way, that was true in Jesus' time too, because Jesus' message, Jesus' teaching, and his belief in freedom, it didn't lead him to the presidency, it did lead to the cross. So that is a bummer, but that is a reality, right? But in this exchange with this impure spirit, this impure spirit is like, you come to destroy us, and Jesus is like, get out, because what the people know is true, that the teachings of Jesus were true, but also what the impure spirit was saying is, I know who you are, and you will destroy us, and partly, yes. The impure spirits, this idea that the powerful people, that the empire, that these things that will be tested and tempted and destroyed by Jesus' teachings is, is true. Empires, systems will be confronted. The Jesus of Nazareth that came and like turned everything upside down and offered a counter narrative about who has authority and who deserves to be loved and who deserves freedom and who deserves to be reminded that they are good and who deserves the love of God was every single person on this planet will disrupt the empire. It will disrupt the system. It will confront the people in power. And that doesn't mean you'll get powerful, but that does mean that you will have an authority that no one has to give you and that no one can take away from you. And what we do with that authority is incredibly important. Once we recognize that no one has to, no one has to knight you, right? I feel like we all grew up in some version of something where we needed approval or like a check from someone. I don't know who it was, a pastor, a parent, a teacher, a man. <laughs> That's the silliest one. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But a lot, of us have, <laughs> a lot of us have lived our lives not walking in the authority that we already have, not walking in the authority that we get to have because this way of Jesus says, if you believe in the freedom and dignity of all people, then you walk in there, you start teaching, you already have that authority. A lot of us are waiting for a government or a leader or someone to tell us about it. And how is that working out for us? How is that working out for us? It's not. When we look around at what is happening in our own lives, we take our own lives, what's happening in the city around us, we take the city around us, what's happening in the world around us, we are in desperate need of people who are stopping and looking and saying like, well, who's the, who's the teacher of the law? What are the teachers of the law gonna fix? How are they gonna do it? What's, what's the, no, you have the authority. The way of Jesus is telling us we do not need the teachers of the law to stamp our approval, we have the authority. Now what do we do with it? What do we do with it in our own relationships? What do we do with it in our family systems? What do we do with it in the city around us? What do we do about it in impacting the world? And that one's always like really big and scary for me. How do we change the world? So let's just go back to like start small. <laughs> but what do we do with it, right? It was so good just hearing people during good news and even Corey and I like, also who, get, who, t who told Corey? Who told us we could just have a church and we could just be like, sure, be gay, yay. Like, no, no one gave us that. We didn't go to a room and they said, 
Now we now grant you to open an affirming and inclusive church. No, we just said, this seems like the right thing to do. Why don't we do that? Why? Because we don't need authority from somebody. If the Methodists aren't down, then bye, right? <laughs> Breaking our backs to make someone understand and give us a stamp of approval. You don't need it, baby. You have it. You have it. You got to do something with it, though. You have to do something with it. This way of Jesus is asking everything of us. It's not a road to power, but it is a road to freedom. And so what are we going to do? How are we going to take it? I think there are a lot of different ways that this can look in a lot of our lives. I think some of us need to be reminded that we have authority over us. We have the authority. No one else has to tell us we're good. We could tell ourselves that we are good, that we are beautiful, that we are deserving of love, that we are deserving of freedom, that we are deserving of care, that we need a freaking hug. Anyone who has told us, the teachers of law who stood up and told you that God's mad at you, that God doesn't like you, that God doesn't approve of you, they don't have authority over you. This way of Jesus says, yes, and when you have that authority, what are you gonna do with it? And a lot of us need to be reminded of our own authority. And then we can remind others of their own authority. And if enough of us are reminded of our own collective authority, then we can start tearing some systems down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Endings, man. Endings are hard. Um, <laughs> but I want to leave you with this. Um, but truly, I, I think as I've been sitting with this passage, and I've been really thinking about the reality, kind of like what we talked about today. There are so many things that we could do. Um, and we say this a lot at New Abbey, like we have to do our part and God has to do God's part. To be reminded and hopeful that there is something bigger than us, that God is working for us, that God is available to us, that God is a part of this, it's not just us. And that is so incredible to think as we lean into this authority that we have to do our part and God gets to do God's part and what is our part so much of this passage reminds me our part is reminding ourselves that we have that authority that we have that the no single person in this room is somehow closer to God than the other person or has more access or gets more privilege or has more God points every single person in this room has equal access to God and that is incredible because no one can give you that authority no one can take it away but you have to be reminded every single day that you have it so we got to use it that's the end. Okay, um, you're going to grab the same three or four people around you and answer this question. Where in your life do you need to recognize you already have authority? Amy, this one's for you.